thing is culture. Generally, if health insurance is private, more and more health insurances will offer you a package, uh, a package which is inclusive of uh, dentic, uh, odontoiatric treatments. So people starting from a very young age will start to go to the dentist and they can relate with it for the duration of a lifetime. So there is this culture which uh, is less frightened or scared of a dentist. Of course, there will always be one patient who is slightly scared of the dentist. But in general, if we're speaking about the whole population, uh, most of them start going start going to the dentist at a really young age and uh, they have like one or two appointments by year so they familiarize better with it and they grow up with a huge consideration of uh, uh, the dentist and given the fact that you are already paying for your health insurance uh, you are more keen to just go and obtain your treatment and this allows to a high volume of patients because uh, of course uh, if it's almost free because you're still paying for it but uh, there are no reason to not go into the dentist and this uh, is one of the reasons why the volume of patients is so high of course another main difference is before, uh, between maybe Italy and the Netherlands is the good work-life balance. Uh, I'm sure that every one of you by now have heard this term, work-life balance, which basically means uh, uh, the balance between the time spent working and the time that you spend by yourself. And sometimes a lot of companies just wash their mouth with this term, but of course I have to say even as an expat working in the Netherlands, that is no, is no lie. Uh, Work-life balance is possible, it exists here, and we will dig a bit more into it, into an insight of the shortage of dentists, and we will see why. Of course, uh, one thing about Netherlands, uh, historically speaking, Netherlands is a country uh, born from merchants. Uh, historically, thanks to their docks and to their ships, they are people used to travel a lot and to have a lot of uh, uh, relationship, uh, business relationship with other countries. So, uh, if you are merchant, is in your best interest to not be so judgy. And this thing uh, has deep roots into the Netherlands culture. In fact, it is uh, absolutely very rare that you will be judged for any aspect of your private life and any aspect of your professional life. One thing that caught my attention uh, is that uh, even if you are a young doctor, a young dentist, uh, you will never be questioned by your patients or by your colleagues. Uh, no one is going to ask you, uh, are you sure by that? Because you seem so young or even when patients come by and they look like a young doctor, maybe they can uh, have a mismatch and ask him, uh, where is the doctor? Assuming that you are the assistant, uh, you can just forget all the stuff and focus on your professional career because here, um, all the time, you are not being judged for your ethnicity. You are not being judged for your sexual identity. You are not being judged for your religion, for your uh, personal stability, for your uh, experience, for your age, which is uh, a very common uh, issue in other uh, European countries, or even for your sex. So, uh, male dentist, female dentist, doesn't matter. Uh, for the medium Netherlands people, uh, a dentist is a dentist and is a figure which is recognized and, most important, respected. And all those points, uh, if we bring them together, can lead to an inequivocably high quality of life. In general, uh, if you go and do some research, uh, the European Commission had stated many years by now that the Netherlands is the country in the European Union which has the most high index of quality of life. And this is no mismatch, it's no error. There are many elements that can lead to this high quality and this reflects also on the professional side of it. But 
if you want to go deeper into this shortage of dentists, we can just look at some facts that I'm sure can be of your interest. So let's look at these. Uh, if you can watch it, uh, this is like the map of the Netherlands, and there are some number of it on it. Uh, the numbers are the number of dentists for 100,000 people. So it's a ratio, basically. And if you look at that ratio, you will start to notice that in the most northern and in the most southern region on the, of the Netherlands, there is a really, a really huge shortage of dentists. We are talking of 39, 46, 34, 44 dentists for 100,000 people, which is a huge comparison. And one could ask, why is that? Uh, why there are so few dentists in this country? Well, of course, we can list like uh, many reasons for that. First of all, in the whole country, there are only three dental schools. So the universities that can offer uh, odontoiatric uh, uh, course are only three. Amsterdam, Groningen, and Nijmegen. So uh, it's not a lot. You can think it by yourself. Uh, only three universities for an entire country. Mm, uh, the number don't add up. So we need to import, pass me the term, uh, more dentists from other countries. Uh, one second reason uh, that we can individu is the aging of the population. Of course, uh, aging of the population is a common theme in all the Europe. But if we look closely at it from an uh, occupational point of view, uh, we will say that more than 40% of the dentists that today are actually working in the next 10 years will retire. And this is a huge number because it means that almost half of the dentists currently working will not work anymore in the next 10 years. And given the fact that there are only three dental schools, as we said, uh, I mean, <laughs> two part two is four, so this is a huge insight. Uh, and this is one of the main reasons that actually lead up to this huge gap in uh, occupational. Uh, of course, uh, this is like a comparison into the Netherlands. But if we want to do a comparison with other countries of the European Union, such as Italy, for example. Uh, how is the ratio? How we can balance like the number between the Netherlands and Italy? Well, I did some research by myself, and uh, the ratio is uh, really impactful. Because uh, if you look at the numbers in Italy, uh, the same number, the same ratio that I'm showing you now, you will notice that uh, uh, the comparison is like one tenth of Italy. So if we look like uh, Genova, as an example, as a city, as almost 1,000 dentists for 100,000 people. And of course, if we look at the numbers here, the comparison is uh, really impressive because we are speaking of even less than one tenth in the proportion. So there is a huge gap that needs to be filled. And of course, uh, needs to be filled with dentists from other countries. One last element, but for this not less important, is the good quality of life. Uh, I was telling you before that in general, Netherlands is the country with the highest quality of life. But what does that mean? Well, actually, this means that if you are like a working professional into the Netherlands after maybe a period of five, ten years, you will be in no more need of working full time. Actual, uh, one of the most important team is that, especially in the female dentist, there are a lot of people that after a starting period of five years, 10 years, choose to work part-time. And they simply renounce to their full agenda. Because from a financial point of view, of course, uh, they earn well and they don't need to work full time. And given the fact that the country has a lot of things to offer and a lot of activities to do, and you have a proper good life here, 
most of the people don't have this leading in them to continue working full time for all of their career. So uh, when you are a successful dentist, after a while, uh, you can just stop working full time. And this is a proper trending team now, nowadays. And so a lot of dentists choose to just uh, do half a week work. And this, of course, generates a gap, generates uh, more vacancies that needs to be filled. So, of course, uh, the more good condition you have, the less work you want to go. And this uh, brings me to you, of course, because we are in constant need of professional figure like yours. This can give you us an insight on why there is such an important shortage of dentists. But if we want actually to pursue this career, what are the necessary steps that we have to, um, to take for uh, working as a dentist? Well, I have resumed the most important steps for you. And of course, uh, the most important step is the big registration. Uh, the big register is the equivalent of the Albo of Odontoiatry in Italy and is a register for all the healthcare professional. Uh, of course, uh, as a dentist, you need to be admitted in the big register before starting working. And this came with much paperwork, uh, came with much paperwork from a degree point of view. So you need your degree to be convalidated by the uh, Dutch government. And of course, even your passport has to be recognized. And if you don't have proper documentation, be sure that the government is going to nitpick you because uh, sure, quality of life is very high, but laws and rules are very strict. So if they give you some requirements, you have to meet them. There is no other way around. Uh, you simply need an European degree, uh, preferably an European passport, but we will talk uh, better about it later. And then you are able uh, with sufficient language proficiency to be registered. Of course, then uh, you need even an X-ray certificate. Uh, this is one of the main differences between Netherlands and other European countries. Of course, like if you think in Spain, in Portugal, for example, uh, you don't need an uh, X-ray certificate, uh, neither do you in Italy. Uh, but in the Netherlands, given the quantity of X-ray that dentists do, to their patients, uh, if you don't have an X-ray certificate, you need to take an additional course to obtain one. And then, uh, luckily, this is not like an hard step. It's pretty easy to do so. And the course in itself is one or two day long. So you don't actually have to worry by that. But it's very easy. And the, this is like another element that can give you this impression of high concern between the quality of the treatment that the clinic can offer to their patients. Then a bit a more curious one, if we want to talk about it, is the titer test. Of course, uh, the titer or hepatite is a very common disease. And to be a dentist, you need to be tested and to have a sufficient high number of antibodies against hepatitis B, uh, which is uh, one of the most common diseases that you can catch working in a clinic. So if you don't have like your vaccine, uh, be ready to do like a quick recall and they will ask a certain level of antibodies. So if you don't reach it, you have to do it again. Luckily now we know that vaccines don't cause autism, so no problem in doing so. Uh, one last thing is health insurance. As I was saying, health insurance in the Netherlands is private. Uh, one thing that I didn't say to you is that health insurance is also mandatory. 
So even in that, there is no way around. You need your to get uh, your health insurance as soon as possible. But other than that, you are good to go and you can work in a clinic where you will need like a professional insurance. But most of the time, clinic can just help you with that. And the professional insurance will cover any issues that might incur while you are treating your patients. Uh, one of the common things that you need if you want to work and live in the Netherlands is housing. Housing might seem like a side team, a side problem, but actually given the fact that the country itself is uh, really small and everything here is uh, two hours by car, uh, there is actually a problem in finding proper housing. Uh, Luckily for you, we as BGB during the year have built a proper network with even some real estate agents so we can support properly our dentist in finding a housing, finding a place where to stay during uh, their experience and their life into the Netherlands. Of course, uh, there are many things that you need, but there are some pros and there are even some rewards, let's call that. Uh, that you can obtain. Uh, one of the most famous and maybe one of the most appealing, I have to say, is the 30% ruling. Uh, the 30% ruling is a measure that the Netherlands government has taken to improve and facilitate uh, the um, importing of dentists. So if you are a professional figure coming from outside with an European degree, uh, you are entitled to obtain this 30% ruling. What is the 30% ruling? In short word, is a benefit, is a taxation uh, that you receive on your paycheck. And basically, it means that after a certain level that you obtain on your uh, paycheck, uh, the 30% of it is just a net. So mm, the gross retribution stops at 70% of the whole uh, salary and 30% of the salary is just untaxed, which I have to say is pretty awesome because uh, uh, it helps you, uh, especially in the first moment after relocating, uh, you will have a bit of expenses for houses, travel, all such of things. But knowing that uh, your earnings are going to be uh, agevolated but that by this 30% uh, ruling is a nice thing. It is one of the main reasons of why such more and more companies nowadays are shifting their uh, HQ to like Amsterdam. After Brexit, for example, uh, most, of, most of the companies that used to have like headquarters in London just did a shift. And nowadays, uh, Amsterdam is like that financial capital of Northern Europe and of course there are more and more companies that are still shifting and the trend has no sign of going back. So it's a phenomenon that is still going up and will go on for the next years as well. So there are like these main steps that are required but the most important one and let me say the most hard one is, of course, learning the language. Uh, learning the language is uh, an important step uh, in this. Uh, why? Because by regulation, of course, if you want to be a professional into the healthcare system, you need to speak Dutch. You need a level of B2 plus and you need to pass an exam both in Dutch language and if you want to work as a dentist in dental vocabulary. So uh, usually mm, time for getting proficient with the language are pretty long because Dutch is not the easiest of the language. Uh, if someone of you is like used to German, it's a similar language as German, but they are not proper on the same level. So um, we can like support the dentist that choose to uh, take a step in this direction with our program, but we will dig into it like in a bit. Uh, of course, uh, you need to pass a proper Dutch exam and 
after you've passed the Dutch exam, you have a proof of uh, proficiency in that language, which is mandatory for being registered in the big register that we were talking about. So, uh, how the exam is composed? It's composed of two main steps. The first step is a general uh, show of proficiency in the language. So uh, you are asked to do a short summary and presentation about yourself or one random topic that is chose the day of the exam. Uh, nothing too hard or impossible. And the second step is proper uh, role play and report about a dental case. So you have to do a simulation with a fake patient and uh, in which you are going to do a diagnosis on him and explain to him what is the plan of treatment that you want to propose to him. And after you've done both steps, then you've done. You have your certification in Dutch and you can start working as a dentist. As I was saying, Dutch is not the easiest of the language, of course, but lucky for you, we as BGB Dentistry uh, have a proper language academy, which is a recognized institute by the Dutch government. And we have by now more than 10 years in of experience in uh, helping dentists uh, across the European Union. So we know exactly what they are going to ask, uh, what documents are needed, and more importantly, when documents are needed, because <laughs> you will discover it by yourself. Many documents by now have an expiration date. So if you ask them too early in the process, then you will ask for them a second time, a second time because they are going to expire in the meanwhile. Uh, let's dig a bit into the language course that we can offer you as BGP. Uh, Dutch is no easy language, of course, but we have a team of uh, professionals that are very skilled in supporting you and to give you the best results in the short amount of time. Uh, for obtaining this goal, we have organized a program uh, which is in total 20 weeks long. And it has two main parts. Uh, the first part uh, is learning Dutch from home. Uh, the length of this part is 10 weeks. And of course, uh, given the fact that you are learning it from home, the first part of the course is in e-learning. So you will have uh, online exercise, online lectures, and online lesson with your group study and your teacher. Uh, after the first 10 weeks in which you will less or more obtain a level of A2, uh, uh, then you will have uh, the 10 weeks in presence. Uh, we have a proper language academy, uh, which currently is in Seefeld in Tirol, Austria, which is a lovely destination, lots of activities to do uh, nearby to ski park and mountains. So you can do like a lot of hikes while you are not studying. But still, during these uh, 10 weeks, uh, you will have a full immersion in Dutch. You are going to meet uh, your colleagues of your study group. Uh, you will meet dentists from all across Europe and you will talk to them in Dutch uh, for almost every moment of the day. And this might seem like a little intense, of course, I know, but still it's the way that you can reach the most proficiency with the language in the shortest amount of time which is very important because usually if you are not like uh, used to learning new languages, uh, getting to obtain a B2 plus can often require a period of one year, one year and a half. So if you are planning on moving to the Netherlands, you have to take this in account. Uh, and this is going to be like an element that can delay the start of your professional experience. Uh, if you do the comparison, of course, one year versus 
20 weeks is really a short amount of time. And there are going to be like uh, many focus on dental language and some terms that are often used into the clinic. So the focus here is to give you all the key instruments that are required to be able to perform as a professional. Uh, of course, in the um, meanwhile, you are already into our uh, academy language, so uh, you will have a all inclusive formula and you will have many collateral activities that you can do in the meanwhile. So it's not going to be like a total pain. Sure, it's going to require a lot of effort from your side, but when you are looking to start a new challenge, a new adventure, uh, effort is always required. So even in this side, there is no really uh, any way to turn around it. And of course, this as the beginning of your career is an important opportunity to even meet new colleagues, to exchange experience, to start building your own network into the country, which is really important because if you are planning to like spend more and more years into this country, building some strong relations is really important to be a successful professional. Uh, of course, we have an internal team and in our internal team there are two uh, dentist counselors, uh, which are Rita and Daniel, uh, which are super proficient in dentistry and they can advise you uh, some dental training of high quality and later they can be a guide to your career and they can advise you uh, on the later training that you will require and they can even give you some advice on how to improve your career. They will do constant check with you uh, so they can be sure that everything is going well, that you are working in a certain way, that you are followed by an assistant and of course uh, if you want to a course on endodontics, on prosthetic, to decide uh, what course and with what entities should I do it. So having someone that you can use as a referral and someone you can ask you, uh, is everything going good? And I thought that you might think, find this interesting is a huge pro and is a perk that you should not underlook. Of course, then, uh, there is uh, the proper training for the exam, so you are going to do a lot and a lot of simulation and in this way when the day of the exam arrives you will have no further surprises. But before uh, continuing uh, with our program, I wanted to just uh, uh, underline some aspects of working as a dentist into the Netherlands. We spoke uh, about the reasons of uh, the shortage of uh, professional figures like yours and we spoke about uh, the general uh, culture that there is uh, about uh, the dentist but one of the main differences that are between like Netherlands and other European countries is the fact that uh, um, here uh, there is as I was saying a private uh, healthcare uh, insurance system and what does that mean by an economical point of view for a dentist? Well, it means that uh, every treatment that you can offer to your patient, uh, the price of the treatment is uh, determined by the government. So uh, between clinic A and clinic B, if I want to like uh, do a crown on the thief, uh, I'm going to pay the same price no matter where I go to do the treatment. And what does that mean for the dentist? Well, uh, this, is, this has some serious implication. If you think about it, that means that between clinic A and clinic B, uh, the competition could never be a competition on the price. If you think about your current experience, 
uh, especially in Italy, I'm sure that most of you will notice that often the competition in other European countries is based on economics aspect. So most of the time, the patient could not afford a proper treatment or could not afford the top quality level clinics that there are across the nation. And so they are going to rely on the clinic that have lower prices. But if a clinic has to lower the prices, that means that usually quality wise, something is not right. Of course, if you have the prices who are chosen by the government, that means that the competition uh, between clinics in the Netherlands uh, is a competition that is based on quality. It's based on the quality of the treatment that we can offer, it's based on uh, the quality of the dentist, the quality of the tools, the quality of the instruments. So uh, this is a huge pro because when the competition is based on quality, both the patient and the dentist can benefit hugely by that. Uh, and this can actually improve the quality of the treatment that you can offer. One other main difference that there is uh, in the comparison which, with other countries is that in the Netherlands, uh, by regulation, you have to work with a personal assistant, uh, which is like a common thing across Europe. But uh, in most of the countries where I've been, uh, often this uh, translates into an advice which means that a dentist should work with an assistant, but in reality, uh, it's not always the case. Here, things are different. Here, every dentist has a dedicated assistant, which helps him not only with the practical side of the work, so uh, giving you instrument, giving you advice, and supporting you during the erogation of treatments, but even offers you support on the, the admin side, administrative side. So uh, given the fact that here, every treatment is a price uh, chosen by the government, the assistant can help you like into uh, putting all the treatments that you have done during the day into the building system, and then you can like focus uh, only on the practical aspect of your work because the assistant is going to take care most of the administration staff. And in that way, you can really focus on your profession and improve on it. Of course, uh, I mean, it's not like the less important things, but there is uh, even uh, one other difference between Italy and the uh, Netherlands. And this is the general idea of uh, the dentist. Uh, here, dentists are seen in most cases as family dentists. So once you can like um, affirm yourself as a professional figure, uh, people will start to trust you, will start to build a relation with you and will choose you as their point figure uh, and they are going to bring all their families with you, uh, which is a huge pro because uh, uh, they have this conception that a general dentist should be able to offer all kinds of different dental treatments. In that way, they can simply choose one dentist for whole life uh, and simply trust him. And this is a serious element that has some huge impact both on the professional side and even on the personal side because that way you can actually build some important relationship. So, uh, going back to our program, uh, we can just focus on the mandatory steps that you are required to start working as a dentist. Of course, um, as we've seen, uh, the steps that are required are many, and we can offer support in all of them. So, starting by here, uh, we can help you in relocating and installing into the Netherlands, where you are followed 
by our dentist counselor Rita, uh, and she can like kickstart your career. She can give you like an introduction to the company. She will follow you during the first year of career, and she will guide you into the successive training that you have to take. And we offer, uh, as a common offer, a three-year contract of guidance and collaboration. After that, uh, you are free to choose if uh, you want to be like a BGB ambassador or if you want to be on yourself and maybe uh, have a more entrepreneurial uh, approach to it and maybe uh, try to build your own clinic, which is possible. And I have already seen many dentists that passed by BGB build their own clinic into the Netherlands. And you will be invited to many networking events. Uh, so, I mean, uh, even I have to say, as an expat myself, uh, the first months are not easy because uh, most of the time you are uh, new to the city, new to the country. You don't know uh, very well much people. So it's really hard to have some bonding and to find some occasion in which um, you can actually network yourself. But Lucky enough, we have a huge network of dentists working in the Netherlands, so we often do some seasonal events where you can meet your colleagues and you can build a relationship. We can also uh, be sure that your salary is growing over time. Usually, uh, we do like an assessment one time every six months, and we make sure that you are working in a certain way, in the proper way. And then, of course, if you are more competent, more proficient than you were six months ago, you are going to have a salary growth once or twice during a year. And it's not a matter of if, it's not a possibility. It's only a matter of when. And given those facts, I think that we can cover all the necessities that, of course, uh, are going to be required to move in, into the Netherlands. There are uh, some steps that we can like do together to make sure that you are ready to uh, go on to do this new challenge of your life. Uh, we are going to support you properly, but we first need to be sure that you are a proper BGP dentist. So, who are we looking for, generally? We are looking for young dentists, even freshly graduated ones, uh, but still, uh, one year of experience is required between a uh, working clinic, but even the internship during the studies uh, counts. So uh, during the last year, usually you are going to do a lot of time into the department uh, working by yourself. And that time is well spent because it does count between that year of experience that we require. Uh, one of the things that we require is a, a proper level in English because in the first step of the language course, of course, you will be not proficient in Dutch language, uh, but you need a common language to share with uh, other participants from other countries and with the teacher themselves. So we are looking for people that actually possess a proper level of English. Um, the most important thing uh, is an European Union degree. So we need a bachelor degree in odontiatry from a European university. If your degree is not from an European university, uh, you better look uh, to inform yourself about the equivalent, uh, which is uh, usually a process that you can ask the university or the government to do. Uh, and they are two different processes. The process that you can do with the government is the um, equivalent one. But the one that actually matters is the 
equipollenza in Italy, uh, which is the one that you do with the university. So if your degree is from another region than the European Union, you can ask the university and uh, we are studying now uh, to start the process of the recognition of uh, equipollent of the degree and in which way uh, the process of registering yourself into that big register is going to be way more faster and no one is ever going to nitpick you on the document provided. Uh, then, if you have some energy, some determination, if you are sure about this choice with, of course, with the level of English and uh, uh, a European uh, degree, uh, well, it's a match then and it's perfect. We can schedule if you are interested, a personal conversation and another thing that we can do for you is uh, uh, to schedule a conversation between you and our dentist ambassador. So we can make you in contact with people, with dentists that have done the same exact journey that you are planning to do and you can ask them how it was. Was it hard? Was it easy? Uh, what are the main deal breakers? What is the most common thing that is going to happen? Uh, even some doubts or curiosities about the countries. And this is for me a huge growth. And I have to say, uh, for my personal experience, uh, I basically have done the same journey as the BGB dentist because my girlfriend in first person is a dentist and she decided to move to the Netherlands with the BGP. So, of course, I followed her and then after knowing BGP, I really like them uh, as a team, as person. So I joined the team as a recruiter. But I have to say, uh, while we were still deciding about it, having the opportunity to spoke with other people who have done the same exact path uh, was a huge pro because then we can just ask them all the questions and we can just uh, fade away all the doubt that we had. Uh, then if you choose to make this step in this direction, uh, you can, of course, uh, inform a bit yourself, schedule a conversation to obtain more information about the program, about the process, about the country itself, and without having to worry about the starting date because we are very flexible. So during the year, we have several groups uh, that are already ready to start. Next one is in July. Next one after that is September, then October. So of course, uh, there are many others planned from the next year. And it's just a matter of deciding when to start. Uh, of course, if you want to apply, uh, be aware that usually there are some steps and conversation that you need to do. Uh, so if you are like planning of starting as soon as possible, uh, always take in consideration one month uh, before actually starting learning Dutch. And I know that I gave you like a lot of information and but the time that we had was not that much. So. If I omitted something, or if you are curious about uh, something, some particular aspect, just ask me. Uh, I'm at your complete disposal now.